Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm here a little wired more than usually, usually that I'm wired, because I am wired instead of wireless. Turns out that last night, what I thought I had done, I did not do properly, so my computer did not uh, charge up quite the way I hoped it would, so I had to bring everything with me. I normally don't, but uh, with that said, um, if you have a prayer request upon your heart, you're welcome to do so. And a shout out to my friend Len T. Today is her birthday. May you, may, may you have many more great ones. And we're thinking of your husband this morning that's recovering from hip surgery. So. Our thoughts are with you, but we're also rejoicing that today is your birthday, and we're kind of hoping that baby Cassandra makes an appearance today, just to say that we're right. We think it's going to be the day that my my friend Cyril is going to have his baby, and uh, they they've got an inducement date for the seventeenth, but I don't think so. I think she's going to come today. I don't know why I feel like that, but uh, if it doesn't happen, well then I was wrong. <laughs> oh well. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Um, before we do that, I need to go over some people that are on my prayer list. I almost forgot to do that. Uh, for those that are online, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. It's very important we pray over these situations, especially the conflict that's going on right now in the Middle East. From the last count I received, there were 2,800 people that have died since that thing started. There have been women and children abducted against their own will. So we have a lot to pray about in that area. Be with those, God be with those people, I swear. I don't know what makes people do what they do, but uh, it's, war is never a good thing. Never. Never has been. Also, I ask that you can re remember uh, Lynn T's husband, who is in recovery right now from his hip surgery, having 
seeing my brother go through that, that's not fun to watch. <laughs> but he'll get through it. He's, uh, from what I'm hearing, he's doing a lot better. Um, anybody who's going through cancer treatments right now, I think of a lot of people in my mind right now, including Gary's neighbor, Eric. And uh, he's got a relative in Arkansas that needs our prayers, too, and has had surgery and is in recovery. I think of uh, Jack and Sally, which is uh, Gerald's uh, cousin and his wife. She's going through cancer treatments along with his uncle, Uncle Chuck, who is also going through cancer treatments. And many others out there. We know that my sister-in-law, Maggie, has a bout with uh, cancer. My brother-in-law did too, but they're going, they're going through it just fine and everything looking good for them. So let's keep them in our prayers, all cancer patients. My sister, Linda, who currently is at Hurley Hospital and has been there for nearly three months. She's slowly uh, deteriorating. And I don't know how, any other way to put it, but she is in dire straits right now. Let's keep her in our prayers. Let's uh, hope that a miracle can happen. But if it doesn't, then... It's God's will for her to go, and that's the way I look at it. It's the only way I can look at it. Uh, and her children, who's going through it with her right now. I'm sure they're full of anguish right now, and not sure, not knowing what's going to happen. They lost their father this year in September. That's rough enough. And they lost their uncle right after that, so... Be with the, God be with them and also be with Clyde, Clyde Bond with an unspoken request. And all these people on social media that to get to the place where they can love one another as Christ taught us to love one another. I wish they'd go about doing it. Some of them are doing it and some of them are not, unfortunately. Let's also remember our nation. Our world nation state and local leaders right now need our prayers, especially now with what's going on in the world today that God gives them the wisdom to do that, which they've been called to do by us, who elected them into office, that they do the will of the people as much as importantly as they do the will of God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you once again. We were able to come to you in prayer and bring our concerns to you. We lift up those people that are in the Middle East right now going through this conflict, this war as they call it, and I pray, dear Lord, that they come to the bargaining table at some point and just stop all this insensitive and incredulous killing that's going on. These women and these children that were abducted, may they return to their families safely and without harm. I pray, dear Lord, that you be with Linty's husband, who is in recovery with his, uh, with his hip replacement surgery. And also be with Carmen. I forgot to mention her at the beginning. Uh, she's working, but she's still got back problems. So be with her, dear Lord, and give her strength. For all those that are going through cancer treatments right now, I pray for Gary's friend, Eric. Eric's neighbor is Eric. And also for all cancer patients like Jack and Sally and Uncle Chuck, Cyril's uncle. Continue to be with them. And anybody who's going through that right now, all people that are going through surgeries right now, like a relative of Gary's in Arkansas, just received surgery this week and is also recovering. Be with my sister Linda today. Lord, give her the strength and the endurance and also the healing that I'm asking you to give to her today. May God's strength be in her. May she get rid of this problem that she's having with her health. But let your will be done. Be with her children as well. As they've gone through a multitude of things in this past two and three months at the, at the most. Just be with them, dear Lord, and give them strength to endure. Also be with Clyde Vaughn as he goes through his uh, un unspoken prayers. He's asked us to lift him up in prayer. We are doing that today. Have your hand upon him, dear, dear Lord. You know what's going on. Help him with that, I pray in Jesus' name. Also be with all those that are on social media right now that are 
in some way or another, just they're either fighting with each other or they're just not agreeing and they're and they're going after each other. And I pray that they get the love of God in them today. That they put aside their differences and become a united people. As I pray for that, I pray for our nation, our world, our nation, our state, and our local leaders. The ones we, we whom we have elected into office to serve us instead of serving themselves. I pray, dear Lord, that they seek the wise counsel of God to do that which they've been elected to do and called to do. I also pray that they listen to the will of the people as well as, more importantly, listen to the will of God in their daily lives. I pray for all that the unspoken requests are being lifted up before you right now. I pray, dear Lord, that you have your hand upon everyone here that has a request upon their heart. May you be granted according to your will. I pray for all our missionaries out there, both foreign and domestic, for what they do, bringing the word of God wherever they are, whatever language they're speaking from, in a structure or a non-structure, be it a tent. I pray, dear Lord, have your hand upon them today as they do what they've been called by God to do, and this is to spread the gospel. Be with the outreach ministries like this one and many others like it that are bringing the word of God to those who otherwise cannot go to church. I pray, dear Lord, that you be with each and every person out there that is bringing the message today as well as the messenger. And that brings me to the churches, dear Lord. The doors are open today. Be with the pastor and the staff, all the teachers, all the people that are behind the scenes in the media, the choir, whatever is going on in the church to bring the worship experience. May people be more enriched with God's word than when they first came in. I also lift up all of the people out there right now that are trying to negotiate peace somewhere in the world. Have your hand upon them today, dear Lord, as they do come to the table and bargain for peace. That they're able to sign an agreement, shake hands, and be friends. I ask, dear Lord, that you also be with all the people out there that are working today, whether they be in transportation, whether it's families to and to and fro, whether it be municipal, utility, and service workers, and health and retail people, be with the homeless out there that they find a place to go and to stay today and get a hot meal and a good bed to sleep in and get out of their homeless state. I also pray, dear Lord, for our farmers and food producers for what they do for us keeping us sustained in our homes with the food we which we do get from them. We also pray for our fire police and our military and all branches for what they do to keep us safe and secure where we are in our homes and in our businesses and places of work. I also pray today, dear Lord, that you just simply be with all of us today as we learn from God's word. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. If you have your Bibles today, please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verses 21 through 31. And I'm going to go right ahead and start with that. Welcome all on the internet. I'm going to check you out. I know some of you are on there already. My computer will cooperate. Hello and good morning, Len. <laughs> and happy birthday to you. Good morning, Carrie. And anybody else who comes in after them. Thank you for being here today. We love you all. We're glad you're all here. And we love you all here in the nursing home at Mission Point. 39 years ago, I became a speaker up here. And the reason why I say 39 years is because i got to go back to 84. That's when I first appeared here behind the pulpit. It was before I even met my wife. I came up here with Ray Lash. Ray Lash said, go bring a sermon. And I said, huh, me? you got to be kidding me. I just laughed. I said, I can't do that. He says, go up there and get, some, get, you know, get up there and do a sermon. Okay, I picked up an old uh, daily bread. They just happened to have them. 
and I turned to something that I could relate to, and I spoke on it. And I was nervous, and I was stammering, and I was trying to find my words, and I just couldn't do it. And I, and I prayed to the Lord, and I said, you're going to have to get me through this because I can't do it. If I try to do it without you, I'm in trouble. I've been doing that ever since. I became a Christian in 1973 on December 19th, which will mark 49 years I've been a Christian. Yes, I'm dating myself. I'm, I know. But I'll tell you what. 40 of those years, nearly 40 of those years are here. We're here. 39 years here. 49 years as a Christian. I think about a 10-year gap there between when I became a Christian and I came here and started presenting the Word of God. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I'd be here. But listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians first, First Corinthians uh, chapter number 1, verses 21 through 31. In the King James Version, which I always speak from when I talk on the Bible directly, it says in verse 21, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the, by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It's his whole purpose to save us. For the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. Unto them that are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because of the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Think about that. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that many wise men after the flesh, not, me, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I can see that. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, and, th and things which are not to bring to not things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him... Are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? That according to according as it is written, he glorified, glorifieth, let him glorify in the Lord. We need to do that, folks. We really do. We're in a chaotic world right now. And the reason why I spoke on this today is because of the story that's related to it. And we'll get to that in just a second. This is why I can relate to this story. It says a pastor squinted over his sermon, holding the pages close to his face so he could see the words, and he was extremely nearsighted and read each chosen phrase with an unimposing monotone voice. I did the same thing. But God's spirit moved through Jonathan Edwards. Happen to know who that is. Preaching to fan the rival fires of the first great awakening and began and brought thousands to faith in Christ. Makes me think of Jonah. Jonah, who defied God by not going where he was told to go, he went instead on a ship, instead of going to Nineveh like he was told to do. And what happened? A tempest came up, they cast lots, and it fell on Lot, or uh, fell on Jonah, pardon me. Got a lot on my mind, I don't know why. But they cast him over into the sea, 
and a great fish swallowed him up for three days he's in the belly. And he got him out of that situation, God did. And he went to go preach a sermon for those at Nineveh. When God calls us to do things, we should do them in, at a moment's notice, not when we feel like it. I've been guilty of that over the years. At different times, he's called me to do things. Now he's called me to do this, and I've been doing it now for 49, or for 39 years. Pardon me, 49 as a Christian. God uses unexpected things to accomplish his perfect purposes. Writing about his plan to draw wayward humanity near and through Jesus Christ, loving death for us on the cross. Paul concludes, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 1 Corinthians 1.27, which happens to be the key verse. The world expected divine wisdom to look like our own and to come up with an irresistible force. Instead, Jesus came humbly and gently to save us from our sins. And so, be, so became for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption, found in verse 30. The eternal and all-wise God became a human baby, who would grow to adulthood and suffer and die and be raised to life in order to lovingly show his show us the way home to him. He loves us just as we are. To use humble means and people to accomplish great things we would never achieve in our own strength. If we are willing, he may even use us. And you know how many times I have people come to me and tell me things that I should know coming from God? How many times I've read in the Bible and how many times I've prayed in my lifetime that has had things to reveal to me that I didn't expect to see until that time. I got shown that last night. In my disagreement with a friend, I said that Christians are not here to judge. Christians are here to spread the word of God. Our purpose is not to admonish or to put people down in any way, shape, or form. We're here to just give the good news of the gospel. And that's what I'm supposed to do. There's some things said to me about Christianity I didn't care for. But I also thought at the same time, the ways of the world are much different than the ways of God. That's why we're separate. That's why we're sanctified. We're sanctified because we are a peculiar people. We don't do what the world, conform, we don't conform to what the world's standards are. We conform to what God expects of us. And for that reason, I'm going to remain true to the word of God and to God himself. Because if I don't do that, I'm doing a disservice to those around me who know me. And I'll tell you this. Jesus didn't choose the best people to be around when he chose disciples. It shows right here. He, he, he got the ones that were despised, like Matthew being the tax collector. That's a good example of what he chose. He hung out with publicans and sinners, so the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees said they sought to destroy him because he was trying to save the world through his healing, through his teaching, and through his death on the cross and resurrection. He was showing us that he was willing to die for you and me. Now, I know I say it a lot on here. But it bears repeating over and over again. The church at Corinth was a troubled assembly wracked by personality cults. You ever go to a church and not find something wrong there? You ever been in a church where you found people that are gossiping, that are cliquish, that sometimes might even drive you out of the church because you don't agree with their doctrine? Facing that, 
is the hardest thing a Christian will ever have to do. You got to keep searching and finding what you are looking for from God, even if that means searching for another church or another place to go to receive God's word. This here, this ministry is all about that. It gives you a place to go where you cannot possibly go right now. If you're homebound or you're in a nursing home or a senior living center, what other way can we present the gospel but through the word of God to the place where they are? And even if I do it online, I'm doing it for the people out there who cannot get to church. It might be too busy in life to get to church, but to get an opportunity to hear the gospel right here online as well as right here at the nursing home. I can't think of a better way to serve God than I am right now. They lacked wisdom, spiritual pride. They got into spiritual pride. Some people get too haughty. They think they're above everybody else just because they go to church. Well, guess what? She should, they should not be concerned about what the world thinks of them, but they should be very concerned, ultimately concerned, of what God thinks of them. Amen. Because that's where it's at. You got to please him before you please man. Because if you don't, depart from me, I never knew you. That's the, that's the thing that I talk about all the time. Immorality is another one. Lawsuits between believers. Yes, that does happen. I have seen it happen. In one church in particular, I won't name the church, but I've seen it happen there, and that's a shame. It should never get to that point. There are two members in the church that don't agree on the budget. They can't come together. They have to bring it for the whole body. Is there any way to conduct yourself in church? No. Of course not. You should be of reasonable service to whatever differences you may have, both spiritually and, and otherwise, to come together to bring yourselves to a point where you can reconcile with one another and go on. Shake hands, hug, smile, and be friends and walk away from it. A radio talk show host once said to me, not to me directly, but for the to the whole group of people that was listening to him, one thing you don't want to do is when you do something wrong, is keep referencing it over and over again. Are you trying to prove your point? If you did something wrong, ask for forgiveness and walk on. Because if you do something wrong, which we do all do from time to time, ask for forgiveness and Reconcile and walk on and be friends. Uh -huh. The abuse of both, the Last Supper and spiritual gifts is another part that gets me. How is the Lord's Supper being misused? And the only conclusion I can come up with is that when you receive the wafer and the, and the, and the juice, be sure you're doing it for the right reason. Make sure that before you take it, that whatever things that you have going on in your life that may be displeasing to God or is displeasing to God, that you settle it before you take the communion. Otherwise, you take it for any other reason. It will be considered a sin. Now, the seriousness of the problems is underlined by the fact that Paul steps away from his typical pattern in letters to the churches. Normally, the first half of the letter is teaching, and the second half is practical application. One teacher said, the first half tells us what to believe, and the second half teaches us how to believe. That's just Paul's style. And being under the influence of God, I can see why it happens that way. First, you got to know what's being said, and then you got to be, in, to be taught what's said. In 1 Corinthians, Paul spends 14 chapters troubleshooting before he gets to one chapter on the doctrine of the resurrection in chapter 15 of this same book. 1 Corinthians 15. 
Let me go to 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to conclude with this. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And the reason why I'm going there is it's no matter what you may be facing, God's got a plan for you. And you go through things in life that you don't understand why they happen the way they do. I know I've felt that many times. Why am I going through this, Lord? Why do I? Why am I seeing this? And the conclusion is he's trying to make me better through my trials. That's the only conclusion I ever came up with. But in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we know this very well. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also will make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. We're able to endure if we go to the Lord and say, Lord, see me through this problem. See me through this situation. See me through anything that I'm going through right now. I asked the Lord this morning to give me strength to get through this day. I asked the Lord to give me strength as I go visit my sister today. I asked the Lord to give me strength in whomever I talk to today about Jesus Christ. And the first place I was coming to was here today. I wasn't going to plan. I wasn't even planning on even talking about this today. But I read this this morning. I said, I got to change everything I'm doing. I got to. Because what it's talking about right here is exactly what I've gone through in my first 49 years of being a Christian and 39 years of bringing the gospel right here in this place. I can never forget <sighs> The night I accepted the Lord, the thing that my my uh, friend Brad Stein told me, and I still utter those words today, that he said that you got everything to gain and absolutely nothing to lose if you accept Jesus. And yes, that's true. Brad, God rest your soul, brother. I know I'll see you in heaven, but one thing I do know is what you told me then rings louder tonight, today than it did back then. God's got a plan for you. Why not let him run your life for you by trusting in him and obeying his will? What's wrong with that? Oh, but I got to do this. Well, why not make it a matter of prayer? Oh, God, God will not understand. Yes, he will. He understands before you even ask him. He knows the number of hairs on top of your head. He understands you better than you know yourself. He knows what you're going to do five minutes from now. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow. So why not trust the one that gave his only begotten son for the sins of all of mankind? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. That's the way it says it in the King James Version. We do get that gift, that free gift of eternal life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's a promise to you. You, every individual in here, every every person that's hearing my voice right now, it's for you, not, not just for me alone. I'm sharing the information that the Bible gives me to you. What are you going to do with it? I'll read uh, two questions here from our daily bread that we read from the day. Ponder these questions in your mind as soon as this pops up. Sometimes the computer doesn't work as fast as I would like it to, but I'll get it. Confident that it'll come back up. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Now I'm going to read these two questions. Ponder them in your mind for a moment as I conclude. Here are the two questions. 
What unexpected things have you seen God do? How many miracles have you seen in your life? And when you pray to him, do you always get the answer? No, not always. Be it be by your will. Be it be by your glory, Lord. That's what I always say. How will you make yourself available to him today? You're doing it right now by being in church and listening to his word. But take time to read it. If you have a daily bread, turn open to these words today that I spoke from. I used a daily bread to start this thing, and I'm using a daily bread still today. Because I read it thoroughly, and I go in, and I go into a more of an in-depth study on it. And I had to do it within 35 minutes. But I understood the scripture. Because I've read it before again and again and again. And it just keeps saying so much to me every time I read it. And I don't care if I've read it one time or I've read it a thousand times. I still get out of it. Because I'm looking for answers from the Lord. Every time I open up a book. Every time I pray. And every time I speak. So let us go to the Lord in prayer as we conclude today's message. Thank you all for being here. I see Gary's on here right now. Good morning, Gary. Good to see you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you again for your unexpected ways. Help us to follow you closely, not just today, but every day, that I may be used for what pleases you and what direction you have me going right now, whatever it is. Wherever wherever you have me and Tony go to from here is up to you, not up to me. I'm just your servant. And I'm trying to do your will as best I know how. Let us all be receptive to God's will today whatever we decide to do with our lives. Will we accept Jesus today or will we reject him? The choice is up to the individual. I pray that more people come forward today than ever before. If anyone has a prayer request upon their heart, let them so do so at this time and grant each and every request according to your will today. If there be someone here today and maybe feels like they've fallen out of favor of God in some way, maybe backslidden, they can come to you and ask for your forgiveness, and you set them on that road to righteousness that leads right straight to, right straight to heaven's door. And the door will open, and the Lord will say, enter that kind of people servant. There may be somebody here today who's never experienced what we all know to be the truth. We all know that Jesus came into our hearts at one point in our lives to become our personal Savior. I pray that, they, that someone comes forward today to accept Christ as their personal Savior because God is just and able to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and sin. The Bible says all of sin that comes short of the glory of God, but it also says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So let somebody come forward today and say this prayer right with me. Father God, I know that I am a sinner. I come humbly before you, confessing my sins unto you, because I know I deserve the punishment for every sin I committed in my life from the time I was born to the present day. But I know, Jesus, you took the sins of the world upon yourself, was nailed to a cross, thorns thrust upon your head, beaten to the point where you weren't even recognized. And a thief on the cross asked you, Lord, remember me as I come as you come into your kingdom today. And you said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. So I know, and I'm asking you right now, dear Lord, to become my personal Savior. Amen. Guiding me and directing me, by, directing me by the power of the Holy Spirit 
each and every day of my life as you see fit, taking the sins and casting them into the sea of forgiveness as far as the east from the west can never be remembered again from this day forth until the day you call me home to be with you in heaven to, to receive the crowns and rewards that are waiting for me at the gates of pearl and the streets of clear glass gold. For this Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer online, contact me at Jethro Lee B. Corner. If any of you said it here, grab a hold of me and I'll help you get through what you just did and help you to understand what you need to do. So, and contact me at Jethro Levy Corner also on Messenger so that I can give something to you today in the mail, the five, ten days. So, I'll tell you about that on Tuesday if you don't understand. But I got to cut this a little short today. So, God bless you all for being here. And again, God bless you because God loves you. And all of you, and so do we. Have a wonderful and great day and the rest of your week along with it. God bless.